Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling Chapter 1 The Boy Who Lived Mr. and Mrs. Dorsley of Number 4, Private Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Darsley was the director of a firm called Grannings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large mustache. Mrs. Darsley was a thin and blonde and had a nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as they spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbors. Darsley's had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Darsleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. Mrs. Potter was Mrs. Darsley's sister, but they didn't meet for several years. In fact, Mrs. Darsley pretended she didn't have a sister, because her sister and her good-for-nothing husband were as undarsleyish as it was possible to be. The Darsleys shuddered to think what their neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in the street. Darsleys knew that the Potters had a small son, too, but they had never even seen him. This boy was another good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with a child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Darsley woke up on the dull, great Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening all over the country. Mr. Darsley hummed as he picked out his most boring tie for work, and Mrs. Darsley gasped away happily as she wrestled a screaming Dudley into a high chair. None of them noticed a large tall knee owl fluttered past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Darsley picked up his uh, briefcase pecked Mrs. Darsley on the cheek and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye, but missed, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing his cereal at the walls. Little tyke, shouted Mr. Darsley as he left the house. He got into his car and begged out of number four strife. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sigh was something peculiar, a cat reading a map. For a second, Mr. Darsley didn't realize what he had seen. Then he jerked his head around and looked again. There was a tabby cat standing in the corner of the private drive, but there wasn't a map in sight. Who could he have been thinking of? It must have been a trick of the light. Mr. Darsley blinked and stared at the cat. He stared back. As Mr. Darsley drove around the corner and up the road, he watched the cat in his room. He was now reading the sign that said, Private Drive. Now looking at the sign. Cats couldn't read maps or signs. Mr. Darsley had himself a little shake and put the cat out of his mind. As he drove towards town, he thought of nothing except a large order of drills he was hoping to get that day. But on the edge of town, drills were driven out of his mind by something else. As he sat in the usual morning traffic jam, he couldn't help noticing that there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people about. People in clocks. Mr. Darsley couldn't bear people who dressed in funny clothes. 
the gets up you saw on the young people. He supposed this was some stupid new fashion. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel, and his eyes fell on the handle of this weirdos standing quite close by. They were whispering exactly together. Mrs. Arsley was encouraged to see that the couple of them weren't young at all. Why that man had to be older than he was, and wearing an emerald green clock. The nerve of him. But then it struck Mr. Darsley that it was a probably some silly stunt. These people were obviously collecting for something. Yes, that would be it. The traffic moved on, and a few minutes later, Mr. Darsley arrived in the Granny's car park, his mind back on drills. Mr. Darsley always sat with his back to a window in his office on the nearest floor. If he hadn't, he might have found it harder to concentrate on drills that morning. He didn't see the owls swooping past in the poor daylight, though people down in the street did. They pointed a gaze open-mouthed as owl after owl sped overhead. Most of them had never seen an owl even at the night time. Mr. Darsley, however, had a perfectly normal, owl-free morning. He yelled at five different people. He made a several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more. He was in very good mood until lunchtime. When he thought he'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the bakery's opposite. He had forgotten all about the people in clocks until he passed a group of them next to bakers. He eyed them angrily as he passed. He didn't know why, but they made him honestly. This lot were whispering exactly too, and he couldn't see a single collecting tin. He was on his way back past them, clutching a large donut in the back. And he caught a few words of what they were saying. The Potters, that's right, that's what I heard. Yes, their son, Harry. Mr. Darsley stopped dead. Fear flooded him. He looked back at the whispers, if he wanted to say something to them, but he thought better of it. He dashed back across the road, hurried up to his office, snapped at his secretary not to disrupt him, seized his telephone and had almost finished dialing his home number when he changed his mind. He put a rare server back down and stroked his mustache, thinking, no, he was being stupid. Potter wasn't such an unusual name.